Welcome back to the GSMC MMA podcast. In segment one, we were talking about UFC 303, the possibility of Conor McGregor maybe not being there and who could be a potential re uh, replacement for him in that event. As we go into segment two, I do want to remind you that uh, we do get questions and comments that come in during the show. If you want your question at the top of the list, you can go to gsmcpodcast.net, leave a tip or a donation, and that will ensure that we see that question. Again, that is gsmcpodcast.net, and it really does support the show and the network. As we head into this next segment, we are talking boxing as opposed to that is last segment. Give me one second. Some days are like this, and it's not even Monday. Uh, we are talking Chel Sonnen and Anderson Silva. Um, this is an article from Yahoo Sports, and it's got some extensive quotes from Chell Tate. So, uh, before YouTube existed, Chell Sonnen waited for it. The ultimate <laughs> practitioner awaiting his ultimate trade. All those years in the UFC, the years on the wrestling mats before that, now it seems like it was just a preamble. All designed to give him stories to tell and expertise to lean on as he holds court for his 1.28 million subscribers. Because really, what could suit this man more? His whole fight career, he barely stopped talking long enough for them to put the mouthpiece in. Sonnen was born to sit there in his custom-built studio, telling stories and cracking jokes into a camera, layering deadpan wit over surprisingly sincere asides until his audience is unsure what's real and what's just for laughs. All this is to say, a second career as a commentator and tireless content creator um, seems to be going incredibly well for Sonnen. So why, at 47 and with a wealth of experience as a grappler but absolutely zero fights as a boxer, would he decide to put on the big gloves and fight his old foe Anderson Silva on Saturday in South Hollow? According to Sonnen, the boxing aspect of this fight is at least partially the result of a negotiation strategy gone wrong. He says, I was dealing with Anderson and Masvidal in the same week. All of a sudden, Chael P is in high demand, which I wasn't even interested, but they weren't interested in me either. This wasn't like I was pushing people away. My phone wasn't ringing for those kinds of reasons, but all of a sudden, I get a call from Taylor over at Misfits Boxing, who wants to do a fight with Masvidal. He asked, hey, what rule set? I got Masvidal on the other line. I text him back, let him choose. That scared him. I said, let him choose. Uh, that Team Masvidal backed down. I never heard a word again. There was something about that. They backed down. Tried the same thing on Anderson. He didn't back down. He said, great, boxing rules. So here we are. Before we go any further, there's something you should know about any interview with Sonnen. His answers aren't always meant to be taken literally. They're meant, first and foremost, to entertain. Sometimes that entertainment even dovetails with the topic at hand. It can be hard to know what's supposed to be accurate, an accurate representation of the situation and what's in there just because it sounds good. Despite a successful second career, or excuse me, um, this too is what makes Sonnen so good at the role he's crafted for himself at this stage in his life. These days, he's a professional talker. Um, so let's get into some of those um, those quotes when he realized Silva wanted to fight him for what may or may not be a genuine retirement bout. Sonnen said he was flattered as well as surprised. I didn't know I mattered to him, Sonnen said. I knew that we had some moments together, but in the body of his career, he had moments with other guys. He had title fights with other guys. He had strenuous fights, and he had the media wanting his attention, and he had pay-per-views, and he had big paychecks with other guys. I didn't. I just have him. Every big moment where somebody might come up to me and pay me a compliment, it has to do with him. Whether it was a press conference or it was something said or maybe we met and, or a, it was a fight that they came to or they watched on TV. But for me, they all tied to him. I fought 51 men. People don't know about the other 50. Everything in my career does tie to Anderson. I didn't know I was special to him. Still, Sonnen admitted when a guy selects you as the opponent for a farewell fight in his home country, you can't help but realize that he probably didn't pick you because he thinks you're going to beat him up. <laughs> it's no sig sig secret that striking is Silva's specialty. When Sonnen became a much better striker over the course of his career, it will always be just something he did in between takedowns. Um, so... I don't really know, I don't really care about the rules, Sonnen said. I'm going to try to beat him, and one thing I don't like and one thing I will not do and I'm not attempting to now is to feather the nest for a fall. Oh, I didn't have time to train. Oh, I was only in the room with my son. Oh, boxing isn't my thing. 
I don't care if we're going, if we're doing a cook-off, it's me versus him. This is my final shot to beat the guy who I've never beaten at anything. He keeps me up at night. He haunts me. I will be devastated if I lose this fight and I will never come to you and tell you what the rules were. I will kick him in the nuts if I have to. I'm going to bring this man down. I got four rounds to do it and mark my words, I will not screw this one up. I know that was a bit long, but you needed to get all of that chillness in there. Okay, first off, Anderson Silva, I mean, the, the, in my opinion, I, I don't know if you say he's the greatest of all time. In my eyes, I think he's the most talented. It's either him or John Jones is the greatest two MMA fighters of all time. I know so he, impressive. he ended his career maybe not the way people would, would have liked, maybe he stayed a little longer, the whole boxing career as well. But, man, I love Anderson. Uh, met him a couple of times, one of the nicest guys you'll ever want to meet. Now, it's, at first off, I, this, this snuck up on me. I didn't realize that Anderson was retiring, that he was having one last fight. And if you ask me, okay, Anderson is retiring. Who do you want to see Anderson fight as his last fight ever? The first person to come to mind would be George St. Pierre. Maybe some people would say John Jones. But it'd be a very short list. It'd be St. Pierre, maybe John Jones, Chell Sonnen. That would be the th that would be my big three that I would love to see Anderson Silva have his final fight with. And we're getting that. It's uh you know, it's not in a it's not in a UFC or MMA cage, it's not in the UFC at all. It's gonna be a boxing match. But for one last time to see Anderson Silva versus Chael Sonnen in San Paulo to for Anderson's final fight, I love it. I don't know how serious this is gonna be. Uh I hope it's not that serious, to be honest with you, because Anderson has been training boxing for a while. Anderson, even if they never trained boxing, Anderson is the far superior striker. Chell's a wrestler, always has been a wrestler. So I don't really see this as more of a competitive bout, but what I do see is a piece of legacy seeing Chell Sonnen one more time. Chell P. Sonnen in the ring one more try, time against Anderson Silva is amazing. I remember when it first went down, I hated Chell. I I was I was I was I was Team Silva. And he was this guy that said all this crazy stuff. And then seeing the second one and seeing how the the first one, Chell dominated the fight. And Anderson got him at the very end. And then the rematch and how big that was. And and Chell's right. Anderson has had mega fights with many, many other fighters. Uh, and if you, you you think about it, and Chell's being kind of light as well. Chell has had some, some pretty major events. Not on the level that Anderson Silva has, but Chell has as well. But this is it's weird to say two guys are about to get into the ring this weekend to fight and it's a feel-good story but that's exactly what it is um i'm hoping that they're i don't know the rules with this but i'm hoping they're gonna use big gloves i don't want to see chell get hurt i don't even want, i don't want to see anderson get hurt i'm hoping that this fight will go the distance we'll be able to see two of our legends kind of right off in the sunset. Anderson wins in his hometown. Chell looks good. This and Chell collects a check. You know, Chell's gonna want that check. Oh, sure. Chell gets a check. Anderson gets, gets the legacy event. Um, you can't go wrong on this one. I will be watching this. This, this will be, this is crazy enough. This will be my number one thing I'm gonna watch this weekend. I watch a little NBA fight. I'm no, I'm gonna watch the NBA finals. Oh, but sure. this is gonna this is my top event. 
Yeah, you know, I want it to be kind of a perfect storm of a fight. I want it to, I don't want it to be over in round one. I don't want it to be over in the first couple of minutes. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to go the distance. I want it to be competitive, but again, I don't want anybody to get hurt. I don't want it, you know, if you want, if you could, if you could tie it up with a nice little bow, I just want it to be, um, go the distance, fun, fun. competitive, but leaves them both in a good light and makes us just, I just want it to be feel good. As a matter of fact, I don't even mind if Chell actually tackles Anderson <laughs> at some point well, in a lighthearted way. I don't want him to do what he said he was going to do, kicking him in the, um, in the, area yeah um, but uh and i love yeah. seeing the press conference and them and anderson hugging on him anderson's yeah. a good guy ladies and gentlemen anderson is an amazing guy um you know i've been i've been fortunate to meet a number of mma fighters and and uriah and anderson are the two that i've met that I have the best feelings with. I did not know you met Anderson. Yes. I knew you met Uriah. Yeah, so those two are two two You're holding people. holding out on your co-host. <laughs> the two people that I, I've, I've had the, the best experience with, excited about this one. Uh, I don't, I don't, this isn't like the Tyson, Jake Paul fight where I'm looking at this, is a, this is a, a real fight. I don't look at this as a real fight. I'm actually hoping that it is not a real fight. I'm hoping it's an exhibition between two two old rivals who have now become friends who are about to sell off in the sunset together as friends. I think it's perfect. Absolutely. Again, I want it wrapped up in a nice little bow. <laughs> if, I can, if I can have my <laughs> wish, it's not about me. Uh, we are going to go ahead and take our second break of this episode. When we come back for our final segment, we will be talking about Dustin Poirier's comments after UFC 302. You are tuned into the GSMC MMA podcast, and we will be right back. <laughs> 